So, this is going to be a guide on how to properly blend renders or any picture with basically any background. And, I mean, the first key to successfully blending a render with a background is to have a good render. You don't want one that has, you know, a white outline or it's real scratchy or low resolution because that'll really affect you when you scale it or any other thing. Uh, basically, this would be a decent render, and a decent way to cut it out would be to use the pen tool on this setting, uh, whatever it's called, pass setting, my bad. Uh, you could also use the polygonal lasso tool, and it would work just as well, but, well, not just as well, the pen tool works better because you can leave what you're doing and then come back to it and continue which you can't do with the polygonal lasso tool plus on the lasso tool you can't move your points around and all that good stuff so to renderize this red eye of doom I just noticed that uh, I've already done it and I cut it out with the pen tool so I'm going to control click the thumbnail and copy it and paste it over here and now she's in the background and we'll just it's kind of a bad render because it's cut off at the bottom and top and right and all that bad stuff but oh well so now we have the render placed in the background we're going to do one method of blending I'll save that for later uh, which is just simply feathering the render to the background and this is not always good. I mean, I don't always get, I don't always recommend it because you can lose. You know, go back. Lining that defines the picture, and you really don't want to lose the definition of the image, or then it just look like a big faded blob of color and possibly some detail. And yeah, I just don't recommend it. You can choose to do it if you want, uh, but still. basically feathering is a quick fix it's kind of a harsh way to say it but it's a quick fix that I happen to use a lot and I probably shouldn't use it as much as I do but well I do so you clear it a little bit more and as you can see it's already starting to feather or blend in with the page on that side but if you go down here it just looks blurred which is bad but I can't really help it with the feathering and next step would just be to take out brushes from the same pack that you brush your background with and just go along the edges of the render and it really it really helps out blending which is you know what the main goal is and I actually do this a lot nearly in every piece because it's a good way to keep the texture of your background going and to blend in the render with that said background and we'll just keep a little bit more and now it's pretty blend pretty blended in great word it's pretty much blended in and done but we can just to maintain some definition you know do a high feather and just go kill the edges basically uh, So the opacity to about mm, 30, 30 to do it, uh, and I mean that's blended with the background. Uh, that's the main way, and that's one of the only ways. That's how I usually do it. But another another key thing about blending is you want the background to match the render, and of course you don't want it to be all purple and be monochrome that's horrible I'll just make this a purple for uh, purple and cyan with a hint of blue that were you wanted the contrast which ma means make the edges pop or make there you know a big difference or a noticeable no ugh, can't talk a noticeable difference and going through here and you can just keep adding 
subtracting whatever you wish. Let's add some sign. And you'll notice that it's starting to be monochrome and this way of blending. But that's alright. Because we'll fix that in a little bit. Unsharpen that. Render some clowns over that. And you'll see it's kind of patchy. Which is because we just added clouds to it. Add another color balance. And this is another way to add some contrast and not to, you know, keep the coloring the same or not to just make it all one shade, which is horrible looking. I would never recommend it. But just get it to where it's a good central tone and that works. Uh, duplicate the one you saved or you should have saved before because that's basically crucial when you're always messing with signatures or anything. Keep a position saved render down there. So I'm going to make it visual and it's not really blended anymore because it's not blended at all. But I'm going to feather it by 6 roughly, delete, hit delete about 4 times and lower the opacity. Now what this does is it successfully blends it in with the background, it keeps definition on the shape or the render, and it lets the render's original color show, which is crucial in my opinion. You never want it, you know, all to be monochrome, or you never want to take the render's color away because that was the original design. And I mean, basically that's it about blending, or simple blending. Uh, if you would like to learn more about this subject. Is there any other subject that you could probably think of in Photoshop? Email me at this email address and I'll get back to you on more VTMs. Uh, see you guys later.